Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kahalayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akim, teaching about the mind, why I'm that's in sincerity and truth. It's the brother Yachazah from Great Millstone, Dallas, and I just wanted to um, back up the apostle Elder Gabar, uh, along with the other Akim that have done videos uh, concerning Vocab Malone and, uh, and his blanket statement that uh, the Hebrew Israelites uh, don't teach the gospel. You know what I'm saying? When you watch the video, you can see that he was talking about IUIC. And just like uh, Captain Yashawamba said, man, we get it. They teach, they teach in Israel. We don't agree on everything, but at the end of the day, they teach in Israel. And uh, they helping uh, wake up the nation as a whole, you know. Uh, it ain't nobody's business. It ain't nobody's business how we deal with our brothers moving forward in the kingdom and all of that. But as far as uh, Israelites preaching this word on the highways and the byways is concerned, uh, you have groups like Great Millstone and IUIC and ISUPK and HOI and uh, 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 HODC 12 and so on and so forth, you know, because the scriptures prescribe. That when the gospel is preached, it'll be preached out on the highways and the byways, man. You see? Out on the highways and the hedges. You know? Preaching the gospel, it was it's a, it's a way to do it. All right? Yahweh Shai sent the disciples out to teach the gospel. You know? So what we're going to do is we're going uh, to get into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, first of what I want to do is I want to look up the word gospel. You know what I'm saying? I want to look up the word gospel. All right. Let's type it in. All right, gospel. All right. Now, we're going to start. Since they like to start in the New Testament, just to appease them, that's what we're going to do. All right. This is uh, Matthew chapter uh, four, verse, chapter Matthew four and twenty three. It says, "And Yahweh Shai went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people." All right. So we're gonna get that word gospel. All right. You on Galion, right? Now, it says, a, re a reward for good tidings, good tidings, the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, soon to be set up, and subsequently also of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, the founder of this kingdom, right? So it's Yahweh Shai's kingdom, under the rule of Yahweh, right? These, l l l letting the people know, letting the people know. Now, keep in mind, the Lord's people is the Israelites, Right, the Lord's people is the Israelites, because vocab said that it's not about your bloodline; it's about your faith. Now, when it comes to the whole bloodline thing, the Lord has been dealing with the same bloodline throughout the Scriptures, contrary to popular belief. Right, it says, "And Yahweh Shai, having suffered death on the cross, to procure eternal salvation for the men in the kingdom of God." But as restored to life and exalted to the right hand of God in heaven. Thence to return in majesty to consummate the kingdom of the Most High. Now, according to Jeremiah 6 and 2, the Lord looks at us as a comely and delicate woman, right? We are married unto the Most High, right? The union of Yahweh to the Israelites, we are joined together by the law, statutes, and commandments, right? To consummate that marriage, to consummate that union, right? In order to consummate that union, the law, statutes, and commandments had to be given to us. He didn't give it to any other nation. And we've already uh, established that the Lord has dealt has not dealt with any other nation the way he deals with Israel, pursuant to Psalms 147. Right? Alright. It says, the glad tidings of salvation through the Messiah. Salvation through the Messiah is only to the, uh, to the Israelites. Right, whether they be uh, born Israelites of the circumcision or born Israelites of the uncircumcision, but it's all about the, that nationality, that bloodline, that seed. 
right? The seed of David, the seed of Abraham, right? Seed, bloodline, those things go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? It's all about that seed. Now, of course, you can get a blood transfusion. That's why I say if an Edomite gets a blood transfusion from an Israelite, that ain't going to make you an Israelite. So it's bigger than the blood. It's all about the seed. But you have to have that understanding to be able to teach. You see? It says the proclamation of the grace of the Most High manifest and pledged in Hamashiach. The gospel as the messianic rank of Yahweh Shai was proved by his works, his deeds, and his death. The narrative of the sayings, deeds, and death of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai came to be called the gospel or glad tidings, right? So the story of the Messiah coming and dying for the sins of the nation of Israel will be qualified as the gospel, the good news. Yahweh Shai bringing Israelites to repentance. So when the Lord, so when the Lord uh, 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 judges that all Israel can be saved. So when we were in captivity during the time of Yahweh, which was under, he was under Roman captivity, right? The good news was for all the Israelites that were under captivity at that time that he was come to deliver us. That's the good news. You see, that's all we talk about is Yahweh coming back, man. <laughs> so much to the point to where people say we sound like a broken record. But we're not preaching the gospel. Hey, vocab, define gospel. You know what I'm saying? What's your definition for the gospel? Just like Yahshua Wamba said, man, y'all don't even give a damn about Jesus no more. It's all about to hell with the Israelites. You see? But the gospel, the gospel is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai sending the prophets to tell the Israelites that they uh, 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 have an opportunity to repent before the destruction comes, man. Going into the kingdom and all the benefits of the kingdom. Going into the rewards for repenting now and saying no to this world. Right? It don't say nothing about the Edomites and none of that. Right? Now, let's get up. Uh, profane is Esau. All right. All right, profane is Esau. Because it ain't, it ain't for everybody, man. Right? This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. It says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Matter of fact, let's get let's go ahead and uh get his name. Alright. <coughs> Salakia. Strong's G, 2269, Esau, Esau. All right, Esau in the Hebrew. All right, Esau, Harry, which they got that wrong. All right, it says, was the eldest son of Jacob and uh, was the eldest son of Isaac and twin brother of Jacob, right? All right, let's see. Do we got anything else in here? All right, firstborn son of Isaac. <laughs> Right. Esau don't mean Harry. All right. Now Hebrew origin Esau and Edomite, right? The father of the Edomites is Esau, right? Anybody profane is Esau. And y'all try to say that it's just talking about Esau himself. No. Esau is the father of the Edomites. And what do you do with your sons? You pass down your ways. Just like Jacob passed down his ways to his sons, Esau passed down his ways to his sons, right? And it was to be a fornicator and a profane person, right? So this is what makes him ineligible. You see, this is what makes Esau ineligible for uh, for salvation, man. You know what I'm saying? This is what this is this is why he can't receive the good news because it's not meant for him to receive the good news, right? Says Jacob, have I loved Esau? Have I hated you? Love Jacob, uh, the most high loves Jacob, so he gave him the information and he put Esau aside, All right? All right, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, All right? 
Let's see if that's the same word. Yep, euangelion. Same word. The same word. Let's see what it is in chapter 11. Alright. Euangelizo. Alright. Let's see if that's anything different. All right, to bring good news, to announce glad tidings used in the Old Testament of any kind of new good news of the joyful tidings of God's kindness, in particular of the messianic blessings. OK, that's what I'm saying. So when the Romans were in rulership during the time of uh, the Lord being on the scene, they weren't being heavily persecuted. They weren't in no danger. They was in rulership. You see? So bringing that good news, bringing that good news of the Messiah's blessings was to who? The people that were in captivity at that time, which were the Israelites. OK, it says in the New Testament, used especially of the glad tidings of the coming kingdom of the Most High. That's what I'm saying. The Most High's kingdom haven't come yet. It still haven't come yet. We still in the rulership of the Edomites with the earth being given into the hands of the wicked and the salvation to be obtained in it through the Messiah. And of what relates to this salvation, right? And what relates to this salvation is who you are. This salvation relates to the Israelites. This salvation, I will say, this says that Yahweh Shai was born because he was going to save his people, right? Glad tidings are brought to one. One has glad tidings proclaimed to him, right? How did you have glad tidings proclaimed to you? Through the prophets. Only the prophets are bringing glad tidings. You see? The Christians, the Christians don't even have a ministry going right now, ushering in the, 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 the kingdom of the Lord. It's all about them and what they want to do and how you can't judge them at this point. Right? It says, instruct men concerning the things that pertain to Christian salvation. And the Christian salvation is going into the Israelites. Why? Because the original Christians are the Israelites that followed the Messiah. Hamashiachim is what they would have been called. Right? So you got to deal with that. Now, let's prove. Let's prove that uh that Esau is done. All right? Let's prove Esau is done. Let's get Ezekiel 35 real quick. Matter of fact, let's get Ezekiel 25. Let's get Ezekiel 25 real quick. And I'm going to get straight to the point. Since I'm on this lunch break, we got to make it quick. All right, Ezekiel 25 and 14, it says, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger, according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord power. Right? Letting you know that that good news, I was say, that's good news for the Israelites that they're going to be. Matter of fact, this is why. This is why. This is why it's good news to the Israelites, but it's not good news to the Edomites, right? This is Ezekiel 25 and 12. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon him. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, Yahweh, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make them desolate from teeming, and they of Dedan uh, shall fall by the sword. You know what I'm saying? Going into those Germans, uh, those Edomites that were uh, that were that were given the capability to come up with the uh, the nuclear capability. You know what I'm saying? They were the when the Lord created the Smith to make the waste to destroy. He was referring to Edom and them putting those weapons together to destroy themselves ultimately. All right? It says, and I will lay vengeance upon Edom by the my hand by the by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger. According to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord Power, Yahweh. All right. Now it's telling you that the Lord is gonna lay his vengeance on Edom by the Israelites, right? So let's get Obadiah so I can go back to work. All right. All right.
All right, let's do, uh, I'm going to start at verse 15. This is Obadiah 1 and 15. It says, For the day of Yahweh is near upon all the heathen, and thou hast done it, it shall be done unto thee. Thou, uh, thy reward shall return upon thine own head. And that's completely messing over the whole planet and all the people, whether they be heathen or Israelites. It says, For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. They gonna. That's what I'm saying. It ain't going to never look like they had the upper hand on us at all. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. So during all this destruction, Mount Zion, which represents Israel, is going to be uh, delivered. It says, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Right? Including them, I mean, including their land. Right? It says, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Right? Which is the southern kingdom. And the house of Joseph, a flame. Which is the northern kingdom. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle them in them and devour them. And there shall none be remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken it. Right? That don't sound like good news for the Edomites. Right? All right. In fact, let me get Isaiah 14 real quick. Let's get Isaiah 14 real quick. All right. This ain't good news right here. Not for the Edomites. This is uh, uh, Isaiah 14 and 21. It says, Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, right? No, They're not going to rise in the rulership no more, nor possess the land, which they removed everybody's landmarks after they destroyed them, right? Nor fill the world with cities. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to be able to continue to build and uh, do construction all over the place, right? It says, for I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, right? The name of Edom, the remnant of Edom, which consists of the sons and the nephews. Anybody that can grow a ride, anybody that's born with a ride that's an Edomite will be destroyed, man. That's not the good news, you see? But they the only nation, they the only nation that was prescribed such a destruction, man, right? Such a judgment. Okay, so that's not the good news. I will say the good news, according to the uh, scriptures, is Yahweh sending Yahweh Shai and the prophets to tell Israel that everything is going to be okay in the end. That's the good news. That's the gospel, right? And that goes into so many different things, man. But it's all rewards for the nation of Israel. So he's uh so 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 uh 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 Edomite vocab Malone, you lose again, man. You lose again, man. It's not even it's not your job to preach the gospel. It's our job to preach the gospel, man. You see, and that's what's going on through the spirit, man. The gospel is being preached by the Israelites for the Israelites to the Israelites as the will and good pleasure of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And with that, I want to give all praises. To Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah HaKwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to the Akim teaching about the mind while moth. That's the sincerity and truth. Shalom.